Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson about Peter Bernstein again and this time we're going to talk about some really cool chords. So I'm in the middle of my uh, Peter Bernstein series and uh, by coincidence he's playing in the Netherlands this week and I'm planning to go see him tomorrow, it will be like the fifth time I see I'm seeing him but I can't ever get tired of it it's so creative so inventive and it's just so cool uh, to see to see someone play the guitar like that it's very unique so I look forward to it and um, so I this is the third episode I made the first episode um, a few days ago there'll be a link to that episode in the description then I made the second episode um, only for patreon for my uh, patrons so if you want to have access to that episode, uh, click on the link to Patreon in the description. And I'm continuing with um, more episodes just because I find it very beneficial to study it. I've studied before, but somehow now it makes more sense. It seems to fit better with um, my current way of playing. And um, so I made a huge PDF already with stuff uh, I could potentially talk about. So I just make episodes until... Um, I either get tired of making episodes about that or until the views start trailing off, then I will switch topics again. Uh, so this episode, I'm just going to look at some chords. Just because uh, Peter Bernstein is very well known for his really... The, the word is cool, like cool chord work. And not only uh, during comping, but also... Or not only during solos, but also during comping. Um, I have a mix here, uh, it's mostly solo stuff, but I also have uh, transcribed lots of examples for comping. Um, in fact, I think the next episode, which will be a patron exclusive, will be about uh, comping. Uh, stuff that he does on ballads uh, and faster tunes, and then I, I transcribed that, but that will be the next episode. Today, uh, to get started with the chord stuff, just let's look at some, um, some really cool stuff. So let's take a look at this first um, 2 5 1 in G. Uh, let me just play it and then we'll talk about it. 1, 2, so it starts before the 2 5 1, right? So 1, 2, 3. <laughs> couple of things about how to play it before we talk about why I like it. Um, those dragging chords, you really have to drag your hand. Don't don't play. No. Actually, I slide. I I play the first stroke, then I slide, and I play the third one. Now make sure you can really hear those slides. Same. Even though I play both uh, chords, I keep my fingers pressed down, so it's a smooth sound. It works even better, of course, on art stop, but it works fine on the Gypsy Jazz guitar too. So why do I like it? I like it because this interval here, that's like a C and a B. Of course you could play, right? You could do. But now it really sounds more normal. Like if you play with the, the, that interval, that major seventh, it becomes more special. That's why I like it. And of course the chords are cool, but um, I never analyze this, this stuff. I just transcribe it, and uh, and then I like it. And I know I can play it on the two five one in G because that's where he plays it. So um, let me demonstrate it on a coquette because I've been doing that all the time. Um, of course it's in D. Now this would be very high in D. Um, but it's possible. So I'm, I'll just improvise a little bit, maybe some chords also, and then I'll play this in D, and then the bridge, of course, we have a 2-5-1 in G. Second A. Thank you. 
nothing to say about it, just very cool. I have another 2.5 here in the document. I'm not going in order, let me see. There, this one. Uh, this one I wrote down in D. Sounds like this, one, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Okay, so the idea is that you play those first four chords really short with some attitude. Uh, but then at the octave, you play a little bit longer than the chords. There's still a rest between the octave and the next chords, but it's not like this. No. Then the, this chord that we really likes is it's a it's an octatonic chord. Actually, he ends it on this D, but then I put this behind it because there's a lots of other two fives where he likes to play this movement from from uh, A7 to D. I just combine it, you know. In G it would be three, four. Mm. Now this first bar, you could actually experiment with placing those first two chords just somewhere else, like. I just play the same four things, but I just start somewhere else. Doesn't really matter. It's so short, it's just an effect, right? So let me uh, play it on coquette. First, I'll play it exactly like it's here, and then maybe the first two chords, I'll just play them at another place. Now maybe you wonder what are all those other chords I'm playing, but uh, let me give you my philosophy on chords, um, because um, in a real performance I actually play lots of chord solos, heavily inspired by uh, Django, Stochelo, uh, Peter Bernstein, uh, Wes Montgomery, stuff like that. And uh, sometimes people, uh, they want to have lessons specifically on that, it's like how do you play those chords? And they expect me to have some kind of theory or like method, but I don't. Here's the way I do it. It's exactly the same as with all the other stuff. When I hear something on the recording I like, um, I transcribe it and then I learn it on the guitar. I learn where my fingers have to move and what the chord progressions I can play it on. I don't care about any of the theory or what the chords mean or whatever. I just transcribe it. Yes, I can transcribe. That's the one thing I can then do maybe that, that not everybody can do. I can uh, very clearly hear when on recordings what the chords are, right? I can hear the individual notes, so I can describe it. Now, I'm, I've done it for you, so you don't have to do it, but um, I don't really care about the quality of the chords, like like 9, 13. I mean, I could figure that out. And But when I play, I don't think about it. I, I think about the specific formula or specific 
chord sound that I've stored in my mind because I've played it a billion times and then I just play one cool chord after another. And somehow Peter Bernstein sounds to me like he's doing that. He's just playing cool stuff he knows, of course, with a lot of taste. Um, but but it's the same process. I'm, I'm not, I don't think he's trying to build up a chord library uh, by studying inversions and drop two. And I heard people talk about drop two and drop three and drop four. Um, I've never done any of it. Uh, I just play cool voicings that I like. And that's what I'm showing you here. These things are really cool, I think. And if you uh, collect uh, 20 cool things, you can play really cool chord solos because everything you'll be playing is cool, right? Okay. Um, okay, uh, let's let's look at this. This is actually not Peter Bernstein. This is what something I uh, described for Mike Moreno, but I just put it on this uh, form because it's something that's very handy. It's four chords for G, G6 or G major 7. So the, the future in it, that there's a C sharp in some of the four things. So I guess it's, you could call it Lydian or something. Um, all the notes are from, um, from a Lydian skill. So um, those chords are built from that skill. Who cares? It just sounds great. But you could play them individually. You could play the first chord or the last chord mostly. And then the other chords are kind of passing. So now you combine it with what we already have. Um, for instance, right? Or the other one. Uh, um. Sorry. Stuff like that. So it's just cool voicings. Now, if you want to play this in D. That's a kind of a problem because then it would be here, right? That's too high. But you could maybe... You could start with the second one. Something like that, right? So just string them. I thought it would be nice to put it on this uh, PDF. I already talked about this in my Mike Moreno lesson. Also talk about chords. It's an old video, but it combines nicely with the other stuff on this page. Uh, oh, here we have another two five one. Very pretty. It's mostly for ballads or medium swing. It sounds like this. Three for. <laughs> For now, what you can also do, I discovered when I was improvising, you could also play the beginning exactly like it's written, and then you play. So you play one more chord, the same chord as uh, uh, this, this, the second to last chord, but then you shift that chord three frets up because it's kind of a diminished chord. Probably play, but two is enough. So you could add on this G uh, triad or G6, remember G major 7. Uh, yeah, it's all possible. I, I like this uh, triad sound after all these uh, luscious chords. Now in D, this would be almost impossible to play, I think it would be here. It's possible, but it's, it's hard to do because of the, the neck joint. So I'm not sure I, I would be able to pull that off on Coquette, but I can at least in the bridge play this uh, thing for G. Thank you. 
Very pretty. Uh, let's go to... What else? Do we, did I miss something in the bottom? No. Ah, okay, this... Yeah, I had to put this on the sheet. Oh, even though I can't really demonstrate it on a song. But let's talk about it, because this is what I played in the opening of the video. I played... So let's start with these last two chords. Those I did get from Peter Bernstein. I got this from Mark Martijn van Eetersen, the Dutch guitar player, and he, he loves this. I like it too. It's just really nice two chords you can play on the major chord. So now in this case it's G flat. So this forcing the major seven and the and the root are together to make this uh, uh, minor second interval. Very pretty, and this just fits in the 2 5. You play 2 5 and D. B e minor, A7, then you play those two chords. It's a little bit tricky to play with your thumb, especially the second chord. So you have to. My tip is to really put your. Um, I don't know what you call this in English, the palm of your hand against the neck. So to make it easier to grab it. It's still not easy, especially low on the neck, it's, it's, it's quite challenging. Okay, so we got out of the way. Let's talk about the other chords. So the, big, the first two chords, C minor, F7. So this really great open uh, string forcing. You get this uh, G augmented with an F on top. Of course, you can only play this on F7. You, you cannot shift this with the open strings, but it's just n n cool to know. Then we get this, which is nice by itself, like B flat minor, E flat, E flat seven, which almost sounds like right. You could, he could, he could have done that too. Just keep it the same, but because he knows his open string forcing, he puts it there. And then A flat minor, D flat seven, because the chords are just C minor, F seven, E flat minor, E flat seven, A flat minor. He plays this forcing for A flat minor. Beautiful with the open string, open B string. Something you can use both for A flat minor seven or, or D flat seven. Sounds a little bit like, right, this chord, which is a good al al alternative. And then for D flat seven, and let's say you want to play A minor seven or yeah D seven. You couldn't play it. You could play. You just don't play the open string for You substitute this one. That that would be the bottom two strings are muted, and then you get uh, eight seven six eight. But if you have D uh, A flat minor, you can play. So, so I, I can't really demonstrate uh, on coquette, but I could play parts of it, right? So I could, for, for instance, play the last two bars. If we go to to D, right? And to G. I won't demonstrate, but you get the idea. Uh, just some really uh, cool open string voicings to know, both for F7, which you could also use for C minor, I guess. C minor 11, major seven. Let's say, well, let's say we have two five in C minor, so we get. Yeah, it sounds great. Um, what else do we have? Okay, so here we have a couple of things for D7 or A minor. And this is, comes from a recording where there's a kind of a groove, something like, um, I don't know what the groove is, but something funky, maybe... So 
come like that, right? And then plays one, two, three, four. In fact, he plays it in D flat seven or on D flat seven, then he plays. Uh, so, but this open string forcing on D flat seven, so four three open open. You you could play it on D seven like that, but it's very uncomfortable. So I I was looking for a voicing to play with the same kind of idea of this sharp eleven for D seven, and I came up with this forcing. Which I never played before, but it sounds great. So. Yeah. And then. Those are the next two bars. It's all for D7 or A minor. And then. Great four things. One, two, three, four. So all together, one, two, three, four. And then it goes on actually. The next four bars are even one, two, three, five bars are also for D7. It goes on like this three, four. Try to stretch. And then. Uh, so the whole thing from the top. One, two, three, four. You can hear the really funky um, thing. Now I can really I can't really demonstrate that because I don't have a, a track like that. But I was thinking maybe if I take like Hans Zucker Rose, which the, the first four bars are C7, G minor, I could play. Um, let me just try a little bit. First A, I'll play the theme to get us ready for the song. Yeah, you could use it like that, right? It works best in a funky tune, but it, it works. If you use just snippets of it in your chord solo, it's really cool, especially these really small, small forcings. For instance, like uh, you play line march to A7. I can hear it. Yeah.
that was it. Now, if you want to uh, learn more chords, uh, the next episode, I'm going to talk about really cool stuff uh, for comping that I transcribed. Uh, that will be a Patreon only video. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to make it. Um, I guess in the weekend. Um, and then after that, I'll be back with more Peter Bernstein and I will go back to single line. Uh, I hope I will see you then. Bye.